Welcome back to Mighty Rod Junkies. So this episode, I thought I'd do something near and dear to me before moving on to another park. You see, my favorite holiday is Halloween. And while all your guys' families, if you celebrate Christmas, were making Christmas cards, decorating the house, putting a Christmas tree up, yeah, that was my family when it came to Halloween. We did everything and anything. I've always been a massive fan of horror movies. The first horror movie I ever saw was George A. Romero's original Night of the Living Dead when I was only five years old, and it kind of grew from there. I never was really afraid of horror movies as a kid. My nightmares usually consisted of being in school with no weekends or getting kidnapped or robbed. Those things terrified me as a kid, but not horror films. I mean, when I was four years old, my very first Halloween costume that I remember was a vampire. And when I would go trick-or-treating and people would answer their doors and say, Oh, look, a vampire, I would say, No, I'm Dracula. So, in today's episode, I thought we'd move on to Fright Fest, an annual Halloween event at Magic Mountain that I do annually. On top of the actual history of the event, I'll be doing something very different by giving a review compared to other Halloween events around the area. Since this is the first Halloween video, there's nothing to compare it to, but eventually we will get there. So getting right into it, Six Flags as a company had established Fright Fest in 1989, but it wasn't until October 7th, 1993 when Six Flags Magic Mountain had their very first Fright Fest. Originally only six days leading up to Halloween, the first Fright Fest actually did some different things than the surrounding rival parks. Firstly, it was an all-day event. This theme is still somewhat present in today's Fright Fest. Most Halloween-themed events take place after regular hours of the park, but Magic Mountain chose to make theirs an all-day affair. Second, the event didn't cost extra to attend. While Knott's Berry Farm was charging an extra $25 in 1993 to attend their Knott's Scary Farm, or Knott's Halloween Haunt event, Magic Mountain didn't charge anything extra to attend their Halloween event since it was an all-day affair. Ironically, when Knott's Berry Farm got wind that Six Flags was having their own Halloween haunt event, they greeted it as a friendly challenge. However, Magic Mountain stated the event was geared towards families rather than the intense horror that was at Scary Farm. When Knott's learned this, they announced a new daytime Halloween event for kids at Camp Snoopy that same year. This rivalry would be something that Six Flags had to face, whether they liked it or not. Fright Fest wasn't even coming close to the reputation and awards Not Scary Farm was getting, and when Halloween Horror Nights returned to Universal Studios Hollywood in 1997, Fright Fest wasn't anyone's first go-to. But that was okay with Magic Mountain. As they had stated before, they weren't really looking to compete with rival parks. This was actually saying a lot considering the Fright Fest at St. Louis, Georgia, and New Jersey are huge and immensely popular. While Magic Mountain's Fright Fest was definitely popular, it lacked what the other sister parks had. With all the financial trouble that had hit Magic Mountain, it was the end of Fright Fest being a free event. That being said, the event was cheaper and still is cheaper than the surrounding parks. The park didn't break from its tradition of having the Halloween events all day, but now instead an additional fee would gain you access to mazes that were only open during selected hours at night. In 2010, when shareholders began taking over the majority of the park's decisions, Frightfest began teaming up with companies for advertisement for more revenue to make Frightfest a closer competitor to its rival parks. It took them four years, but by the conclusion of the 2014 Fright Fest, it was officially a competitor. While still a third place event when you were comparing it to Universal Studios and Not Scary Farm, park reviewers, the press, and the public stated that it was no longer a distant third, but instead worthy of being compared to the two other parks. The Golden Ticket Awards, which is basically the Oscars for theme parks, has yet to recognize Magic Mountain's Fright Fest with even a nominee, however it has nominated other Fright Fest events at other Six Flags parks. But to be fair, the Golden Ticket Awards didn't add Best Halloween Event into their roster until 2005, 
in which Universal Studios has smoked the competition, winning nine times since the award was introduced. I've been going to Halloween theme parks for a little over 12 years now, and I do other Halloween events outside the theme park atmosphere at least once. But for theme parks, once I go, I usually continually go unless the event is a complete letdown. I've been going to the Fright Fest at Magic Mountain since 2013, and I've never missed a year. So I figured I'd talk to you guys and show you guys what you get if you go to Magic Mountain's Fright Fest. Starting with decorations, Magic Mountain gets a heavy dose of Halloween decor for this event. Scattered all throughout the park, you really can't find a naked spot. And inside the mazes, you have very detailed settings and props, usually on a bare wall or backdrop. The biggest con about their props is that they usually aren't animatronic, but instead just basically a giant statue. While this might not bug most people, when you compare it to surrounding Halloween events that have giant animatronics, this will end up looking dated. I mean, a giant motionless spider is going to be less intimidating than a giant moving spider. <laughs> Next, we have themed food. I hope this is something that changes in the near future. The Halloween food here is completely lacking. Other than your typical Halloween cotton candy or decorated desserts, there is nothing sold here you can't get year-round. They do have a Halloween pre-event dinner, which is really the only place you have Halloween-themed food. Moving on to scare zones, Magic Mountain really shines in this area. Unlike most scare zones at other parks, you usually only have one really good in-depth scare zone, while the others are just the theme of what the monsters are wearing. Magic Mountain does a decent job in really submerging you in these scare zones. Whether it's detailed decorations that are specific to that scare zone, or if it's just something as simple as lighting, it makes the scare zone almost feel like a designated land. Opening and closing ceremonies is something Magic Mountain has drastically changed throughout the years. From two clowns talking about college cheerleaders to a parade of monsters walking to their area, you get something new almost every year. But the point to an opening ceremony or a closing ceremony is that you have to see it. Like it's a must-do part of the night. Sadly, Fright Fest doesn't have that. While entertaining, if you miss the opening or closing ceremonies, it won't be the end of the world. Scare Talent. This is one I had to break up in two different sections because it just wasn't fair. You see, when you're outside the mazes, you get professional talent that is doing their best to make sure you have a good time, whether it's being terrorized or laughing at your friend who tripped while running away from the monster. However, be prepared for this to be ruined when you pay extra money to go into the mazes. Instead of the usual snort sound or boo attempt, or even the occasional creative way to scare you, you get this. <laughs> Teenagers just screaming. Screaming very loud, screaming very loud, and annoying. Fright Fest is notorious for putting all its prime talent outside and its high school talent inside. While you do get the rare gem of scare talent in the mazes, be prepared for a lot of attempts to scare you by screaming, breaking character, and laughing. In recent years, Magic Mountain has hired professional makeup artists for their Halloween event. This is why you get such detailed and original latex masks with the most beautiful color arrangements for Fright Fest. Outside the mazes, you get very elaborate makeup that you don't see inside the actual mazes. To me, if I look at you and go, that's really cool, or the average person says, that's creepy, that's a hell of a makeup job. Lining up your new face with your acting, and you can have a pretty believable monster. And now on to what is possibly the most important thing when you go to a Halloween event. The actual scare. While this really depends on your age and your sanity to horror, if you do these events every once in a while, or you're going with your family, or you're a teenager, you'll have a lot of fun with some jump scares and freaky makeup. But if you're a veteran, or you love horror or horror films and not easily scared, 
you'll find this event a little underwhelming. Don't expect anything to actually freak you out, and if you're really used to maze designs, you'll know where the talent will be popping out well before they do. Again, these are my opinions based on facts, but my opinion isn't an actual fact as much as I'd like to think so. There may be things here you thought I was too hard on or too soft on, or something you completely disagree or agree with. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this event, so feel free to leave a comment down below about your Fright Fest experience. And if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button. I have two more videos left for Magic Mountain before we move on to a new park. So if you want to see more, please subscribe.